My name is Chris Steele. I serve as the director of TEAM. It's a nonprofit dedicated to breaking cycles of incarceration. What TEAM represents to the layperson is that we are an entity that helps individuals who are overcoming a troubled past um, successfully navigate through the barriers of rebuilding their life and moving toward um, being a productive, contributing member of our community. TEAM has been in existence now for 33 years. I would say for the first 25 years, our organization provided basic education services and employment placement assistance to anyone who showed up at our front door. But in about 2012, about 10 years ago, our board of directors made a very strategic decision. As we begin to look at our own data and, and the individuals who needed our services, what we realized as far back as we could see in any given year, about 74% of the individuals who voluntarily showed up at our, at our place of operation for assistance were individuals who had felony convictions. And that felony conviction acts as a scarlet letter that, that excludes a person from most employment opportunities, most housing opportunities, a lot of educational opportunities, and, and just being productive in our community. And so we realized at that moment in time that this is the population that, that needs our help. And, and uh, you know, there's a lot of great nonprofits in Oklahoma City, and we wanted to not duplicate uh, the great services that others are providing, but rather collaborate and, and really find out who our target population is. So we, we tailored our mission statement, we revamped our programming, we introduced evidence-based curriculum to really begin to work with individuals who are involved in the criminal legal system. A couple of things that we've learned through the process is that we can't wait to start working with someone until after they're released. We have to start before they're released. And so within our reentry services, we actually have the opportunity to begin working with a participant nine months prior to their release back into the community. And so we do a lot of things during that nine months, but we, we teach cognitive behavior classes. So we focus on things like healthy relationships and conflict resolution and effective communication and anger management and a lot of pro-social skills, soft skills. We teach financial literacy. We, we teach basic computer skills. We build resumes. We practice uh, interview techniques and, and make sure that a person is really ready. We do short-term uh, goal setting and long-term goal setting and transition planning. And we, we identify and remove as many barriers as we can prior to the person re-entering our community. If they don't have a, dot, a tangible job skill, then we partner with the, the State Department of Career Tech and we offer job training uh, to individuals as well. And then ultimately we connect them with an employment opportunity uh, in our community. So we have a lot of employment partners that we work with that are uh, fair chance employers and, and they provide that opportunity and it, and it can change a person's life. And, and then we stay with that individual for a year after they transition into the community just to make sure that they have proper support and accountability and everything that they need to, to, to move forward in a very healthy and productive manner. We, we believe that there's no such thing as a spare Oklahoman, uh, that our community is at its best when everyone's allowed to contribute to the greater good, and so that's what we're striving to do. That's on the reentry side, but since we've started uh, in the past 10 years really focusing on this population, we've added three additional programs, and two are in the area of diversion services. So now we have staff embedded at the Oklahoma County Public Defender's Office and in the Oklahoma County Jail. And when a person is arrested and uh, processed into the, the county jail, we're looking at their charges, we're looking at that person's background, if they do not pose a danger to the community and if they're only in the jail because they cannot afford to pay their, their bond, then we advocate um, for their release to the judges and to the district attorney's office. And we all work in together to make sure that a person is able to, to re-enter the community safely and then connected with appropriate supportive services that will allow that individual to flourish. And so we've just seen tremendous results. We started that program actually in 2017, 
and have secured the release of about 2,100 individuals. And um, the recidivism rate is, is almost nil because when we're able to con con connect a person with a proper support and walk with that individual, make sure that that person has meaningful employment, uh, stability in their housing situation, adequate access to transportation, the individual does just fine. And so that's what we're really about. So we do have a lot of participants who come back and volunteer with our organization. We have individuals when they have completed their, their sentence and served their time and they're no longer under supervision, they return to be mentors for other participants. And, and we're always looking for ways to learn from each other and, and to, to make sure that, that we are um, being diligent and practicing what we preach. We have many people on our staff who um, who have been involved in the criminal legal system and, and they're able to use their life experience now to help other people um, better their own lives. And so it's, it's incredibly rewarding. It's, it's inspiring to get to see a person achieve uh, the success that they, they, they are capable of achieving and then to come back and, and to help the next person um, in line. It's, it's, it's just fantastic. Mm -hmm.